Hello and welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege. Today is July the 9th with more stories around the NFL that I wanted to get to on today's show. Very heavy on the NFC, on the NFC just in general topics. A lot more going on in that conference in the AFC. We're going to start off with the interaction on X between CeeDee Lamb and former Cowboys wide receiver Cole Beasley over some training methods to go off of and then somehow got into the amount of targets that CeeDee Lamb got compared to Cole Beasley. So we're going to go into that. Then the last time we're going to talk about the first episode of Hard Knocks offseason following the New York Giants. The next episode is set to drop tonight. So one more time we're going to discuss it on today's show. And we're going to also get into AJ Terrell, the star cornerback for the Atlanta Falcons. He is entering the fifth year of his rookie deal. What is he looking like for an extension? How likely is it that he gets one? And how much is he looking to get in a potential new contract with the Falcons? That is coming up, plus much more. Before I start, I want to remind you guys, if you have any questions or comments, please use the tip and donations link, gsmcpodcast.net. By using that, I'm able to see your question. It'll pop up in the chat box, and that way I'll read it on air and get your guys' thoughts on anything I say or any of the topics. It's a massive help for this show and the network, so please, if you guys would, use the tip and donations link, gsmcpodcast.net. But that allows us to jump right into the first segment. Like I mentioned, a interaction, very interesting one, between CeeDee Lamb and Cole Beasley. Um, Basically, if you guys know what's been going on with CeeDee Lamb, he has been away from the team this offseason and hoped to get a new big-time deal and an exploding wide receiver market that has just absolutely taken off with Justin Jefferson resetting the entire thing, earning $35 million per year. And his stats aren't too far off of what CeeDee Lamb has produced for the Cowboys, so you can anticipate that CeeDee is looking to get something within that range, but will the Cowboys give it to him eventually? Will they get something done with Dak and then maybe CeeDee Lamb? That's all still in the works right now. The only thing I've seen from CeeDee Lamb, because he has been away from the Dallas Cowboys holding out for that new contract is uh, the workout videos. Like any other wide receiver posts on social media throughout the offseason, him working out with some other guys, his personal trainers, and things like that. Um, And in one of the videos, he's doing nothing out of the ordinary, some plyometric workouts or something like that. And uh, one of the comments was from former wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys, Cole Beasley. Basically, all he said was, Man, just do some heavy squats and power cleans to give advice to CeeDee Lamb, I guess, because maybe he's not a fan of other things. He's just more traditional or something like that. And that's all he said. But then, of course, a fan gets involved and sort of starts this thing that starts to snowball from this point on. A fan responded to Cole Beasley's comment and said, Is Cole really trying to tell CeeDee how to train? Laughing emoji. Beasley has literally never eclipsed 1,000 yards. And Cole Beasley, if you know anything about Cole Beasley, he doesn't usually back down from um, things like these. He always has a response to something. He always goes back at someone. And he responded by saying, Give me 180 targets off the couch and I eclipse 1,000. Stop looking at stats and check the tape. As far as getting open goes, I'm confident I did that with the best of them. Now, that obviously was in response to the fan, but the first part, give me 180 targets off of the couch, you, some people could interpret that differently, and CeeDee Lamb was one of those people, because when he read that comment, he had to respond now, because it almost seems like Cole Beasley was implying that CeeDee needs all these targets to obviously get and attain the season that he had last year, a historical season for the Cowboys, uh, for a Cowboys wide receiver, and for CeeDee Lamb himself. So CeeDee Lamb also responded, and he said, I don't need 180 targets to touch a band. Pull up tape, I'd match you route for route on getting opened, just chill. And after that, the whole situation, interaction sort of died down. Beasley didn't come back too much at CeeDee Lamb. All he said was, never said you did. And uh, I know one other tweet out there that he said was to just stop being sensitive um, because really Beasley was trying to say, and he tried to clear up after that it wasn't really meant for CD. It was more so towards the trainers that are 
doing all these extra workouts, all this extra stuff to wide receivers where clearly Cole Beasley just is more of a is more of a heavy squad guy, power clean guy. He meant it more towards the trainers, thinking that this was extra. But at the same time, you could understand it from CD's point, right? 180 targets, especially when he's trying to get paid this year. If other people see that comment, if other people take it and run with it, if CD Lamb maybe never said anything, social media and people on the internet could take that a bunch of different ways. And that way, people might look at that and say, Yo, you know what, Cole Beasley might have a point. CD Lamb is the only wide receiver on the Cowboys. Because of that, Dak has to force feed him. He gets 180, 200 targets compared to these other guys that don't get the same share. Only that's the reason why CD had such a great season. It's not because he's a great wide receiver. It's because the Cowboys force feed him, forcing him to get these sort of stats and have a great season. And you don't, at the same time, I you do acknowledge the fact that this is just an interaction on social media, but to kind of take CD Lamb's side on why he would respond, I was surprised he did respond anyway, just because he hasn't really said much on anything on his contract negotiations. He hasn't uh, brought up the fact that he should get paid that much or how it's going with the Cowboys. He's been pretty silent for the most part, but he responded, and I could try to understand, you know, he's in a contract year. He's trying to get paid and trying to be seen as high of value as Justin Jefferson or an A.J. Brown or an Amon Ross St. Brown. He's trying to get a contract up to the level of those guys. And if you now have this, and don't put out this small forest fire, per se, that Cole Beasley might not have meant to, but he said it anyway, and people might interpret it a different way. It might start to build up this narrative that, oh, yes, yeah, CeeDee, doesn't really doesn't really stack up to those guys because he gets a lot more targets than they do. So I can understand it by C D why he'd respond and why he might seem a little bit sensitive, but at the same time, we're talking about a lot of money for C D Lamb. Life changing money, huge contract extension, and he's earned that for sure. I think he's earned it off the season that he had. Definitely helped out Dak and performing as well as Dak did. So they really complimented each other, and he was a massive piece for the Cowboys last season. And, you know, I could see it from that point why CD would respond. But was this situation overblown? Was there anything really deeper than the fact that this could have been misinterpreted or uh, CD might have been a little bit sensitive, maybe unnecessary by Cole Beasley to come back at the fan by saying something like this? I would probably say this situation was overblown a little bit um, rather than not. Just because, again, uh, it was a, it was just a fan that sparked this. It was a fan that instigated Cole Beasley, and he might not have thought twice about what he was saying, how it could have been interpreted differently. And that's the day and age, obviously, that we live in. Some people say something, they mean something completely different. And then it goes in a direction where nobody really ends up winning and everyone just ends up arguing. But um, that's really where I saw this and where, you know, it wasn't an ongoing thing for, like, a long time. It was just a back and forth a little bit by uh, CD and Cole Beasley. I'm sure they didn't really pay too much attention to it afterwards, but I think it did. It was worth bringing up the fact that CD and other players that you might see, you know, be oversensitive about something is because they are on the verge potentially of getting a lot of money, and CD Lamb um, has certainly earned that. He wants to continue to build on that. I'm sure he'd love to stay with the Cowboys, but. Right now, it's taken a little bit extra time with Dak Prescott being the priority, it seems right now, with him talking to media recently over this past weekend, how the talks are still ongoing between him and the Dallas Cowboys, and nothing really has moved since then. So the only thing that that does is just push CeeDee Lamb's contract negotiations further back, and he's going to have a youth camp coming up in a few days, and he refused to talk about his contract negotiations at that point as well. So you could sense a little frustration um, from CD from these actions and just proclaiming that he's not going to talk about his contract just because, again, maybe nothing has happened. And I'm just assuming now at this point. But, um, you know, I would guess if something were to happen or if the contract negotiations were moving in a positive direction, I don't think CD would refuse right away to talk about it. You know, just like Dak, completely different people, but just like Dak, he is in the middle of the contract negotiations and he's willing to talk about it, but 
He's not going to crunch numbers or project anything like that, but he's at least open to talk about it. CD is really keeping to himself, not mentioning that at all, not answering any questions about it. So that frustration a little bit maybe with the how slowly the process is going and then you see something like this, you can kind of understand why CD would respond. But again, I think it was just overblown at the end of the day. If I had to choose between this situation being overblown or just being a lot more deep, it definitely struck a nerve, but at the end of the day, um, it just comes down to that contract CD's trying to get. Um, and Cole Beasley knows that. Didn't mean anything by it, I'm sure, but still, it happened. It was something that I found interesting because, again, CD's kept quiet this whole time. This is really the first time that he's brought anything up to sort of defend himself um, for his value and things like that. But let me know what you guys think about the interaction. Did you guys see it? Uh, did you agree with Cole Beasley? Uh, did you think that there was anything more to this interaction than maybe I'm seeing? Leave your guys' thoughts in the comments section. But off of that topic, we're going to go into a break. And when we return after that, the last time we will talk about the first season of Hard Knocks, the off-season version with the second season, or the second episode, excuse me, starting tonight, we're going to go over one more conversation between general manager Joe Shane and Giants owner John Mara on Saquon Barkley and how they disagreed a little bit on whether to keep him or trade him. That is coming up after the break. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 